God made a covenant between him and Noah. He said, Noah, it ain't going to never cease. That means every time you seed, it has to come back. Father, I thank you now for this word. Let it penetrate the hearts of men. Their lives will be changed. Their mentality will change. And their perspective will change. I give you praise for it now. And it's in Jesus' name. And people say amen and amen. You can be seated in his presence. I know I had you standing for a long time, but I'm going to be standing for a long time. You good? <laughs> Come on, say, I'm good. Come on. Climate changes. Climate changes. <clears throat> About two to three days ago, the Biden administration makes the largest, hear me, ever investment in the engineered carbon removal, spending $1.2 billion, not million, billion dollars, about two or three days ago, to vacuum up climate warming and capture gases that's in the air that we don't even see to help remove climate warming gases and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to help prevent more natural disasters from climate changes, climate changes, like it is in Hawaii right now. If you paid any attention to the news, a whole city burned up. Burned completely down. Climate change. It's been $1.2 billion. <clears throat> the other former president don't even believe in climate, war climate changes and global warming. He don't even believe in it. Uh, in Arizona on Tuesday, I think it was, that President Biden designated a million acres near the Grand Canyon as a national monument protecting the Grand Canyon from uranium mining. So will the climate change? Absolutely. You feeling it now. It is hot. It is extremely hot. The other Sunday when I got in my truck to leave church, it was 122 degrees in my truck. It's changing. It has in the past, and it will change in the future. But even as the climate changes, we can know the predictable seasons will continue to come. There's still going to be summer, winter, fall, and spring. Even if they don't look quite how they looked to the previous generations, the climate is going to change. And so how does global warming impact how we view climate change? Someone say, stay with him. It is said that climate change will have detrimental, here it is, climate change will have detrimental effects on the poor. Did you hear what I just said? on people that's poor and deprived and underprivileged. That climate change will have 
detrimental effects on them. For example, it is said that one of the best ways to lift nations out of poverty is to provide access to inexpensive energy. That's why some people in Africa don't even have electricity. They said one way to, to lift them up out of that is to provide inexpensive energy. But with the global push for only renewable energy, developing nations will have a better, will have a harder time, harder time rather, to advance. And poor, poor populations are likely to remain in poverty. And so the scripture is clear in Genesis chapter 8. And God reminds us that God is still in control. No matter how hot it gets or how cold it gets, God is still in control. It's clear that God is sovereign over everything, including the changes in the weather. God is still sovereign. God has revealed the end, and life on earth won't end by man-made climate changes, but it will end when God judges the earth, not with water, but with fire. We just got a glimpse of it in Hawaii. People were jumping in the water to get away from the fire to get away from the flames. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it won't be water next time. It will be fire. It won't be a flood, I promise you. It, it's, God said, it's not, God said, I'm not going to do this anymore. It won't be a flood. It's going to be fire. And last Sunday, I stood here and said, many of us were, were taught to sow seed, but not many churches taught you to receive. They taught us how to give. You give to this building fund. You give to this, and you give to that, and you give to this program, and you give to that. But they didn't teach us how to receive. When it's a biblical principle, you, you can't give and not receive. Watch this. Whatever you're giving, good or bad, you can't give and not receive. In fact, we were taught more to give to the church, more, more than to sow and receive with expectations. And the two words, give and sow, they somewhat interchange because people are so confused because they think giving to something don't carry the same weight as sowing to something. I'm a, more than a giver, I'm a sower. And I just don't sow money. I sow love. I sow peace. Seed time and harvest are two important concepts and biblical principles laid out in Scripture. It's laid out in the Bible. And here's the covenant. Seed time is a time of sowing seed. And the harvest is a time of reaping what was sown that initiates provisions in your life. So as you sow, you receive. As you keep sowing, you receive. I need you to repeat this after me. Say, sowing and, and reaping produces provisions for my life. I want you to say it one more time. It says sowing. Come on, say it again. It says sowing, sowing and, reaping and reaping 
produce provisions in my life. In my life. Perhaps this is why Paul said what he said in 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, when Paul said, He which soweth sparingly. That means that you always give as little as you can give. He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Okay, let me rephrase it. He that soweth little will always reap little. Okay, let me paraphrase it again. He that soweth nothing reaps nothing. Okay. All right. So let me go this way. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So if you ain't sowing nothing, you ain't going to get nothing. Someone said that's Bible. Watch this. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly. Are of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful, hilarious giver. Look at your neighbor and say that part. Come on, look at him. Yeah, yeah. Look at that part. That part. So let him give, not grudgingly. That that means you don't give to be seen. That means you don't give under under pressure. That means you don't give what you don't want to give. Because it, it ain't coming back. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Look, and, and, and listen, verse 8 says this. Watch this. And watch this. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Someone shout all grace. grace. Watch this. That you would always have an all sufficiency in some things. In some things. In some things. Someone shout in all things. That may abound to every good work. Watch this. I'm going to skip to verse 10. Watch this. I wish they would have put it up there for me. But but verse verse 10. So watch this. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower. Both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So that simply means that that as you sow seed, God replenishes and give you more seed to sow. He replenishes and give you more seed to sow. Someone shout more seed, more seed. And if you overlook verse 10, your faith will not work at the level of, of you not knowing and the level of, of expectations if you overlook verse 10. In other words, verse 10 says God is obligated to give seed to the sower Time after time. Okay. So let me go real old school. Back in the day, they would tell us, and they would teach us in church that you can't be God giving no matter how hard you try. The more you give, the more he'll give to you. The only thing they were just saying to us that God is obligated to give you seed. To give seed to the sower time after time. As you see and as you sow, he replenish. God will see it, see to it that you have seed to sow and money for food. I mean, sometime when I open up my pantries at the house, you can't hardly get nothing else in there. 
Right now, my freezers are so full, you can't even get nothing else in the freezers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. He gives you money for food. Another, another translation says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come in abundance to you. So that you may always, under all circumstances, hear this, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? In other words, God would give you seed and multiply it and increase it. And the thing that you do that has his approval, God said, I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to multiply it. I need you to look at your neighbor, politely look at your neighbor and say, no seed, no surplus, no harvest, no reaping. Jesus, no seed. No surplus, no harvest, no reaping. Stop being stingy. You, you too stingy. <laughs> you too stingy. I mean, uh, you, you, you too stingy. And, and the, here's the thing. You can't sow a few times. And then cease the sowing. You got to work the, pro the, the, the process. You got to work the process. You can't just sow, I'm, well, well, I'm, I'm just going to try this. And you do it a couple of times and you don't see no results. And then you stop working the process. Let me tell you how long I've been sowing. I was in high school. My mama taught me how to sow. I've been paying tithes. Since I was in the 11th grade, I've been paying tithes since I was in the 11th grade. See, you can't sow a few times and then cease your sowing. Because you got to work the progress. Look at your neighbors that work the progress. Uh, work the process, rather. Excuse me. Say, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Say, work the process. Watch this. Women will prostitute their bodies to sow to their pimp. Someone said, mm hmm. Did you? I said, women will prostitute their bodies and sow to their pimp. They lay and give percentages, almost all of it, to their pimp. People will vape and sow their hard-earned money to a vape distributor. Vaping. People will glut for designer clothes and sow their money to high-dollar fashion land. They just got to wear this particular fashion and then give God $2. Oh, it's quiet up in here. A man will have a midlife crisis and so there are extra monies into some young thing. Having a midlife crisis. Jesus. People is uncomfortable with their looks. They become uncomfortable with their looks and so money for facelifts. They become uncomfortable with their looks and they so money for breast implants. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Botox injections. Mm-hmm. Butt injections. And then they go to Amazon and they order booty pants for a lifestyle change because they want their butt to pop. And it's fake booty. It's, it's, it's fake butts. It's, it, the, 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 the booty is fake. <laughs> you just spend money for a fake booty. 
Jesus, a fake booty because you feel you become uncomfortable with how you look. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, that part, that part, yeah. Uh huh, because that part right there, that, that part right there. Yeah. And, and before you know it, everything on you is fake. Skinny lips go get injections for bigger lips. Come on. They sow into that. Perhaps this is why the Bible says, be not deceived. For God is not marked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth, it is, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to his spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Watch this. Watch this. And so then the Bible says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, when the climate change, we shall reap if we faint not. Oh, my God. God says when the climate change, it doesn't matter because whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And many times when we speak of this particular passage of Scripture, many times it's from a negative perspective. People trying to make you feel bad about something. But that ain't all what that means. That means whatever I sow, I'm going to reap that. So you ought to be sowing. So you can continue to reap. I'm not saying so to your flesh, so to your spirit, so to your life, so for generations. I need you to go ahead and shout with me. Say, I'm reaping what I sow. Come on, come on, come on. Open your mouth. Say, I'm reaping. Come on, open your mouth. Say, I'm reaping what I sow. I just believe every time I sow into good ground. I'm, I'm going to reap what I've sown. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm good ground. I'm good ground. I'm, I'm, I'm good ground. As, as you sow into good ground, uh, you're going to reap what you sow. Jesus, you're going to reap what you sow. I, I just, I just, come on, open your mouth and say it again. Say, come on, open your mouth again. Say, reap, I'm reaping what I sow. Come on, say it again. Say, I'm a reaping what I sow. Jesus, I'm a reaping what I sow. So the Bible said, Noah built it. I'm closing. Isn't that something? Uh, trick you. The Bible says, Noah built it an altar. He took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar to God. He put the sacrifice on the altar and offered that to God. And, and um, I just want to ask you a question. When was the last time you built God a place in your heart and offered your body as a living sacrifice? When was the last time? Because when you offer your body to God, it's not hard to offer your money to God. I said, when you offer your body to God, it's not hard to offer your money to God. See, your body, your money, your mind, your money, your soul, your money, your life, your money. So when you present your body a living sacrifice, you also present seed as a sacrifice. You present seed. I need you, I need you to just shout it, open your mouth to say, what I sacrifice will always suffice. So that means what I sacrifice is going to be enough to suffice all my needs. It's called sacrificial giving. Glory to God. When, when you give, because you heard God told you to give. Jesus. And if you're not a giver and you're a taker, you're never going to get the, the, the blessings of God if you always take, take, take. You just can't be a taker. You got to be a giver. 
The Bible says that Noah built an altar and offered burnt offerings to God. Now watch this. And the Lord smelled a sweet flavor and said, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Watch this. God said, I'm not going to curse the ground because I smell the aroma of the sacrifice. Please get this. Sometimes sowing can be a sacrifice. I said, sowing can be a sacrifice. But when God smell it and when God receive it, the sacrifice produce a harvest that your mind cannot explain. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? I said, when God, when he smells it, mm -hmm. when, when, when God smells it and, and, and when God receives it, the sacrifice, the sacrifice produces a harvest that your mind cannot explain. Can I tell you how I got to where I am right now? I've been sowing and reaping. <laughs> I've been sowing and reaping. This is how I got to where I am now. I've been sowing and I've been reaping. I started where I could start. I've been sowing and I've been reaping. It probably was $10, but I've been sowing. And then I've been reaping. It might, might have been $50, but I've been sowing. And then I've been reaping. I remember when I went to the first conference at my pastor's church, we had to scrounge up $300 to give an offering. I mean, we had to find it. We, we had to find it. The next time we went, it was 500. The next time we went, it was 1,000. And then this last time I went, it's the biggest seed I ever sown to my man of God, Jesus. It was more than $2,000. I've never sown a seed like that. And, and to help cover the budget, I, I gave $3,000. I gave $5,000 in one day. I went from giving $300 to $5,000 because I kept sowing and I began to reap. Y'all need to wake up in here. I'm, I'm trying to teach you a principle. That's, that's why some of you guys are still... I don't know who I'm talking to on the live stream. That's why some of you are living, still living from paycheck to paycheck. Because you have not learned how to sow. That, that's why you, you're still living from pay. That's why you got to borrow this and borrow that and borrow this and borrow that. Because you ain't, you're not a sower. <laughs> Jesus. You, you got to learn how to sow. I'm, I'm not trying to shout you. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to tell you how to get to where I, where I am. Some of y'all are already where I am. Glory to God. But then there's others, you know, you try to figure out, well, how do we pass it? I've been sowing all my life. And until you stop being stingy, until you start giving to God, God ain't going to give back to you. Not in an overflow, because he'll rain on the just as well as the unjust. I mean, you get something here, there, and here, and there, a little bit here, a little bit there. But I don't want just a little bit here and a little bit there. I said, I want a little bit here and a little bit there. I want God to give me abundance as I sow, I reap. I need you, I need you to look at your neighbors and neighbor. God is smelling your sacrifice. I said, God is smelling your sacrifice. If you ain't sacrificing, he ain't smelling nothing. Y'all missed that. If you ain't sacrificing, he ain't smelling nothing. Who am I talking to? I, I want God to smell my sacrifice. <laughs> so abundance can hit my life. I want God to smell my sacrifice. So overflow can overtake me. I want God to smell my sacrifice. 
So I won't lack for nothing. I want God to smell my sacrifice. So my business can grow. I want God to smell my sacrifice. So my bank account can grow. I want God to smell my sacrifice. So generational wealth can grow. I want God to smell my sacrifice. Smell my sacrifice. So my family won't want for nothing. Jesus, smell, smell. Won't you tell your neighbor again, look at somebody again and say, God is smelling your sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, he's smelling your sacrifice. After the flood, after the flood, God made Noah a promise that the seasons will continue. Seasons will change. The Bible said, while the earth remained cold, heat, summer, winter, day and night, seed, time and harvest shall not cease. That means every morning you get up and it's hot or cold, there's another day for you to sow. Day or night is another day for you to sow. Because while the earth remaineth, there's seed time and harvest. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? As long as the earth remains, trees are growing. As long as the earth remains, flowers are growing. One day it's cold outside and the next day it's going to be hot outside. There's 93.6 days of summer and 88.99 days of winter. As long as there's 93.6 days of summer, Jesus, as long as the earth remain, are you hearing what I'm saying? 24 hours of daytime and nighttime, it will be seed time and harvest. As long as you can see the clock at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be seed time and harvest. Before you go to bed at night, at 10 o'clock at night, whenever you go to bed, there's going to be seed time and harvest. Open your mouth and say, my seed time and harvest will never cease. We never cease. We never cease. And so it's indicative and insulting to God for you to not sow where you want to go and pull yourself up. Pull yourself up. You don't need a sugar daddy. So and pull yourself up. You don't need a sugar mama. You can sow and pull yourself up. You ain't got to steal. You ain't got to rob. You ain't got to lie. You ain't got to trick. You can just sow and pull yourself up. Won't you look at the name and say, pull yourself up. See, put my slide back up there. My, my subject slide. Put my slide back up there. So put that slide back up there. Because I want you to see something. So you can put my slide back up there. Notice the sower, he ain't planting one seed, he's planting seeds. See, sometimes people stop right here. But you can't stop right here. You got to keep doing this. Can I tell you, I'm, I'm now living from, from, I'm also reaping from the seeds I've sown. Because a sower, he's not sowing just one time. He continues to sow. And some way or another, God keep putting seed in his hand so he can sow again. God put another seed in his hand so he can sow again. 
he puts another seed so you can sow again. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Is anybody getting this? Because, listen, let me tell you something. God told me to tell you when you sow, he will give you more. I said when you sow, here it is right here, God will give you more. But you got to sow. Look, and they said, neighbor, you got to sow. Because God would always give seed to the sower. That's Bible. He said, I give seed to the sower. Are you hearing what I'm saying, Mike? He said, I give seed to the sower. Not a non-sower. Seed to the sower. So as a sower, seed, God said, I'm going to give you more seed so you can sow. It's like this. That's how it keeps happening. As you sow, then you reap. As you sow, then you reap. He keep giving seed to the sower. Watch this. It might leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. Y'all better hear what I'm teaching. I say, it might leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life.